Why? Why is this such a big deal? Why would God say that? The first thing, if it wasn't a big deal. Because they possess the power to bring you down. They were the same ones that brought Jesus down in Nazareth and wanted to throw him off a cliff. Now, this is a little different message. I, I had spoken on this a little bit a few weeks back, and then I just felt like I needed to hit it again. Hit it a little harder this time. If you didn't hit it enough the first time, you got to hit it again, right? That's how you fix things many times. It's the old school way. You ever have a, an old tube TV or something like that that you know wasn't working right, and you bonk it on top? What if it didn't come on the first time you bonked it? You'd bonk it again. Let's pray, Holy Ghost, to worship you. I thank you that you are the God of the Bible, that you wrote this Bible and you're speaking to us right now. I ask you to help me to say clearly what you are saying to these people and the people online, that they may be changed and know you in a greater way and fulfill everything you've called them to. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you heard that prayer, there's some things in this message that's going to help you tonight. You see mm -hmm. so Hebrews chapter 4 verse 1 mm -hmm. let us therefore fear now does that mean to be fear, afraid of like a snake no. does that mean is that kind of the fear he's talking about here you know in reverence I mean we need to wake up beware say beware, beware. right or warning we know what warning means or watch out or be careful right mm -hmm. let us fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest say entering into. entering into now so many other things of god you have to enter into it if you don't enter into it then you don't get it right you have to enter into it which means it's still there i just didn't get there Including all the promises of God you're not going to get to heaven at the end of time right God's gonna say or are you gonna to say to him oh well you didn't give that to me no you didn't enter into it it was there you didn't enter into it let us therefore fear lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it why would he write this because it's possible that people could fall short of what he's talking about mm -hmm. are you here yes. is it possible for me to fall short of something that he's called me to do mm -hmm. oh yeah brother for you for sure well, what about you yeah you too it's possible that any one of us so that's why he's saying beware right mm -hmm. so we're gonna we're gonna talk about some things that might hinder you from walk from entering in so let's let us therefore fear lest the promise being left off of entering into his rest any of you should seem to come short of it verse 2 for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them but the word preached was the word preached yeah the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith in them that heard it so the word came to them but they didn't mix it with faith in them and therefore it didn't profit them didn't mean the word didn't come you can be the most anointed man woman in the world bring the, the word of God to someone and it's just gonna come to them and if they don't receive it and mix it with faith nothing are you here yes. verse 3 for we which have believed say have See, past tense we which have believed the word do enter into rest as he said as I have sworn in my wrath if they shall enter into my rest although the works were finished from the foundation of the world so it says we which have believed do enter so do you suppose having believed or belief get this does belief have something to do with entering yes. does unbelief have something to do with not entering yes. and is that God's fault if we unbelieve no. no the belief is there right the anointing is there we have to mix it with faith in ourselves, right yes. okay 
let's go up uh, to uh, chapter 3 in the last verse verse 19 we're just gonna go backwards here a little bit and see how we got here verse 19 chapter 3 Hebrews verse 19 so we see that they could not enter because of what unbelief so the promise was there but they could not enter say enter, enter. they couldn't go into it because of unbelief what kept them out unbelief. unbelief kept them out go back up to verse 15 while it is said today if you will hear his voice harden not your hearts as in the provocation what's he saying you got to hear his voice you got to have a heart that's not hardened so you can hear it so you can believe so you can enter in go up to verse 12 take heed there's those words take heed beware warning watch out be careful right mm -hmm. why would he be saying this because it, there's a caution thing here so caution beware take heed brethren lest there be any in any of you an evil heart of what unbelief. what does God call unbelief evil. evil an evil heart of unbelief in departing from are you guys still here mm -hmm. who departing from the living God is that what your Bible says mm -hmm. departing what does departing from mean turning back going aside departing leaving what the living God see now you you some of us have a problem here it's, it's a good problem to have because we've come so far we can't depart from where we've come right if we do we're we're departing with an evil heart of unbelief mm -hmm. from who the living God mm -hmm. are you getting this so take heed now you can start to see why he's saying take heed it's a warning mm -hmm. thank you <laughs> wouldn't you like to be warned some people would some people don't part of my job is warning people another word for departing would be backsliding is that problematic for people yeah the problem is you come so far and if you slide back you're now exposed to all kinds of things that you don't need to be dealing with and frankly if you're in a backsliding state you're not prepared to deal with it anyway evil heart of unbelief beware warning now part of my job second Timothy if you want to go there second Timothy chapter 4 verse 2 preach the word be instant in season and out of season season reprove that's exciting rebuke also exciting reprove rebuke and exhort are you here with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but my point is is that preaching the word sometimes has reproof and rebuke and if you don't like it that's two-thirds of what he said to do I want the exhortation <laughs> I, I, I want to be exhorted well sometimes you need to be rebuked sometimes you need to be reproved and I like them both because then I can be corrected you see mm -hmm. well that was fun go to mark chapter 6 so let's just read from verse 1 and he went out from thence and came into his own country and his disciples followed him verse 2 and when the Sabbath day was come he began to teach in the synagogue and many hearing him were astonished saying from whence hath this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands verse 3 is not this the carpenter see they've already started reasoning is not this the carpenter the son of Mary and the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simeon are not his sisters here with us and they were what offended at him why did they become offended at him because they had him in a certain spot in their social life in their social structure in their thinking Jesus himself they were thinking he's just the son of the carpenter I'm okay with that 
I wouldn't even be, mind if he had some wisdom but this is over the top you offend my family sensibility are you getting this mm -hmm. do you suppose they were able to receive from him no. we know that they he didn't let's read on here it says verse 4 but Jesus said unto them a prophet is not without honor but in his own country among his own kin say his own kin mm -hmm. his own kin and in his own house and he could there do no he could there do no mighty works how many could he do None. no how many did he do he did he done did no we, there he could do no mighty works why because they only wanted to receive him as a family person or as a friend and they couldn't hear they couldn't hear the word that was coming to them was it the preacher's fault was he not anointed enough Jesus you're gonna have a hard time getting more anointed than Jesus right and saying the right things that Jesus would have said and yet their family ism prevented them from hearing and entering in are you here all right so it's not the message it's not the message or the messenger oftentimes it's the way people hear or people per perceive what is being said or perceive the person that's saying it mm -hmm. are you here mm -hmm. so it goes on here and it says verse 6 that's actually the verse I wanted to get to and he marveled because of their unbelief it was some serious unbelief marvelous unbelief probably the best unbelief he's ever seen or the worst mm -hmm. are you here he mar it made him marvel dumbfounded you could say you go, I can't believe that you can't believe <laughs> so he could do no mighty works there now generally and we're gonna get into this a little bit but generally what had hindered them was generalized worldliness say generalized, generalized. worldliness worldly. if your worldliness level you just follow me here if your worldliness level is up high where's your belief level gonna be low. low what if my faith is high where's my worldliness level gonna go it's gonna go down I'm gonna look at worldly things as a lot smaller right because my faith is big I'm coming at it from a different standpoint yeah. as my faith increases my worldliness decreases and vice versa so they remember they could not enter in because of unbelief and we know a lot of these verses but oftentimes you don't see them the right way mark chapter 4 verse 14 the sower sows the word who, who do we know the, who the sower is it would be the preacher mm -hmm. he's sowing the word the word would be the word of God look down at verse 18 these which are sown among thorns such as hear the word did they hear the word yeah they heard it and the cares of the world the deceitfulness of riches and the lusts of other things enter in and choke the word and it becomes unfruitful the word will become unfruitful and it the person will also become unfruitful mm -hmm. even though they had the word spoken to them it wasn't mixed with faith and if it was it got choked out by generalized worldliness now we're talking about unbelief or an evil heart of unbelief and to beware the preacher preached the word and it doesn't matter how anointed or skilled the preacher is they could be the best preacher in all the land and yet when that word came it was choked out choked out so that it couldn't do anything can you imagine that mm -hmm. somebody that knows the word has it choked out because of all the cares of the world generalized worldliness that's what I'm saying here are you getting this mm -hmm. now remember but if it was if it was mixed with faith in those that heard it it would overcome faith is the victory that overcomes the world all right go to Luke chapter 4 you getting this mm -hmm. Luke chapter 4 verse 18 the Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted preach deliverance to the captives recovering of sight to the blind preach the acceptable year of the Lord right let's look down at verse 21 and he began to say unto them this day is this 
scripture fulfilled in your ears where was the scripture fulfilled in their ears this scripture even though he said all of those things right did he say all those things yes. where was it fulfilled in their ears were they as we read on here were they healed were they prospered were they delivered Bible says that it was fulfilled no they weren't they rejected him the scripture was fulfilled in their ears it was fulfilled it came to them Jesus did his job Jesus was freshly anointed verse 14 says Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit and went to teach this right fresh off the mountain came down and taught it and the scripture was fulfilled in their ear they rejected it didn't receive it therefore they didn't have it evil heart of unbelief mm -hmm. why do you suppose this happened verse 22 you still there mm -hmm. yes. and all bear him witness and wondered at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth they even knew something supernatural was going on mm -hmm. and they said is not this Joseph's son mm -hmm. it didn't matter how anointed he was something stopped the anointing from producing in their life and it was having Jesus in a family situation John 10 27 and you don't really need to turn there it said Jesus said Jesus said my sheep hear my voice what if they heard his voice what if they really heard what he was saying what would have happened to them they would hear that this is the Messiah this is the anointed man of God I heard say heard remember he always said he was ears to hear the scripture was fulfilled in their ear in their hearing but then if they received it they heard him then something would happen to them it was mixed with faith my sheep hear my voice it's the same with me when I say something and someone hears it it can go down in there and change them they could be on the other side of the earth for all that it matters but if that God's connecting them up the Holy Ghost is connecting them up with me in my words and I'll say them something will happen to them and they'll be changed mm -hmm. yes. are you getting this yes. and you can say my sheep hear my voice I had one person say that they 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 left the church over that because they heard me say that you said my sheep hear my voice you think you're Jesus and I was like what are you talking about that's not what I'm saying they literally said that to me well anyway you understand what I'm saying right I'll say things by the Spirit of God it'll go down into you and change you and you'll hear it you go man that was for me that was right I heard that right my sheep hear my voice but a problem something to be aware with which I'm trying to touch on I'm doing a little stronger is that if you put me or the preacher into a family type situation in your understanding or even a friendship type thing it's going to hinder that and it could possibly jerk you right out of that relationship that we have because our relationship in the spirit listen you can hear this our relationship in the spirit does not exist there it does not exist in the family zone it does not exist in the friendship zone and it doesn't mean I don't like to be friends and it doesn't mean I don't like to be you know a, the family I'll talk about that a little bit more but if you go there you're gonna be hindered is this making sense am I getting this across did this hinder Jesus and he's a lot more anointed than I am even though my sheep hear my voice too. <laughs> are you getting this so it's the same with me so I have brought you oh I hope you can hear this I have brought you to a door that is open to you if you walk through it in belief the door that has to do with the Holy Ghost being God in the earth today it's weighty it's powerful it will take you farther than other people will ever be able to go are you here yes. I have brought you to the, to a door of belief and we don't want that to be hindered by anything do we no. you gotta ask yourself did God bring me here and if so why and am I just gonna turn my back on that am I just gonna go backwards from that am I gonna backslide from that or am I gonna go on to the things that are on the other side of that door the door of belief and that's always my job here is to get you to a place of belief 
whether it's with the offering whether it's with healing whether it's with worshiping the Holy Ghost a place of belief same thing that Jesus did so you ask yourself did God bring me here and if so why did God bring me here did you hear did you hear to get here you heard something that you couldn't hear before and you heard it that's how you got here and do you know that you heard do you know that you got here don't throw it away don't backslide but go forwards is God happy when people turn around and fall back no it's displeasing to him I didn't read those verses but frankly it really makes him mad you want to stay away from that right yes. beware that's the name of this uh, message by the way beware watch out be careful don't you got to tread on things lightly right I mean you get you start dealing with large pieces of equipment aren't there places you don't want to put your fingers yes. and for most people there'll be shields there but if you know if you're one of the guys maybe you're a technician that deals with something you know that frankly uh, you don't put your hand in there because you know more about it there doesn't need to be a shield there you're not an idiot mark chapter 6 and uh, we read some of this let's look at verse 1 again he went out from thence and came to his own country and his disciples followed him the sabbath day was come he began to teach sounds very similar to the other thing right began to teach many hearing were astonished saying from whence hath this man this thing and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that such mighty works are wrought by his hands verse 3 is not this the carpenter we're gonna start looking at what is really hindering here is not this the carpenter the son of Mary the brother of J they go on and on here mm -hmm. they knew right where he came from they knew where he lived they named they named it right I know about him I remember when he was a boy growing up they talk like that right yeah. his sisters are here with us and they were offended at him so here he's got this great message and the Bible specifically says it offended them he offended them say he, he. Offended, them. offended them wasn't necessarily even the things he said it was him he's offensive to us now one of the reasons he's offensive to them it was their excuse to not hear the word because when you're in a family situation you're on the same level when you're a friend you're on the same level and friends don't do things that are unfriendly mm -hmm. family doesn't do things that are unfamily like or we're on the same level I'm gonna let you know what I think are you here mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. so they couldn't receive him as who he was in that office speaking to them from a place of anointing they wanted to receive him as the guy they could yell at to get off the porch mm -hmm. you understand now I'm not saying any of this to try to like make myself something I'm saying because I want to go on with the anointing and there's a place and a purpose and a way we do it and there's a thing that if you yield to it it will hinder you and I don't want it to hinder you it's not for my benefit it's for your benefit and I'm not trying to get me it doesn't mean we we couldn't be uh, that we wouldn't be good friends on some level but that's if we go there the problem with that is it can hinder you from going where you need to go and it will hinder me from saying what I need to say but more so hinder you from receiving what I say are you getting this hope I'm getting this across Matthew 11 6 says blessed are they who are not offended in me what did it say here it said they were offended in him mm -hmm. he offended them just his presence now offended them you ever been there yeah. where my presence offends you his presence offend, and then it said blessed say blessed. blessed blessed are they who are not offended in me well, I don't like this message it's a fact you will be disappointed and if you go there you could even be offended which would hurt you if you were brought to this place of hearing 
that's really what I'm trying to protect here is the place of hearing where you hear the anointing and can be changed by it if you bring up the friendship and you bring up the familyism, then it will hinder and has the potential of hindering are you getting this mm -hmm. yes. ministry will do things often that will go crosswise with family and friends natural relationships you will be disappointed you will be offended because people offend people I don't know if you knew that or not people do things that I didn't you know I really was expecting you to do this I expected you to say that and you didn't I expected when I did this you would do that as a friend and as a family member you should not do that so are you see what I'm saying it's a different level and it doesn't mean it, it's just I'm just saying beware and be careful because believe it or not you know I'll be in the spirit praying stuff God will bring something up about you and I'll pray for it I'll deal for it in the spirit in the office that I'm standing in because we have that relationship mm -hmm. not because we're friends but because we're in a spiritual <laughs> relationship we didn't get here by friend relationship no. hey I like coffee you like coffee woo big whoopity ding dong it's nothing to base a relationship on right and if we if we go there and all of a sudden well you don't like this kind of coffee and I like this kind of coffee I mean do you understand all of a sudden it's hindering thankfully most of us like the same kind of coffee <laughs> I'm sold out I am going to this place and I want you there but there's only one way you can go is by entering in say entering in and how, well, how do you enter in through belief and if unbelief keeps you out then we need to deal with it where did I say 46. Matthew 12 46 while he yet talked to the people behold his mother and his brethren stood without desiring to speak with him now think about that you're here you're inside you're doing something mother and brethren the whole fam they're outside they want to speak with you you know how they, they probably didn't just say they're outside they want to speak with you there's there's some force behind this mm -hmm. you must go outside and speak with them mm -hmm. like now you need to drop whatever you're doing go speak with them in my office I need to speak with you you see what I'm saying there's there's there is a, an assertion here and a demand on him that is not under the anointing are you here Jesus is gonna deal with, Jesus really does deal well with things let's just see what he does his brethren stood without and desiring to speak with him he knew there's something more behind the desiring to speak with him than just well or just they desire to but they didn't say anything no they were out there saying something verse 47 then one said unto him behold thy mother and thy brethren stand without desiring to speak with thee and verse 48 but he answered and said unto him that told him who is my mother and who are my brethren this is gonna go over big isn't it <laughs> are you here yes. who are my mother and who are my brethren and he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said behold my mother and my brethren for whosoever shall do say do yeah. So do the will of my father which is in heaven the same as my mother and my si is same as my brother and sister and mother so who is Jesus his mother and brother the people who do it mm -hmm. who did he reject just the they could have been inside in fact some of them do come along eventually right yes, yes. but when it was presented to him as a family demand it came second say family demand, family demand. Came, second came second to doing the will of God are you here yeah. because every time anytime it tries to raise up against that look what it did before there's this Joseph's son blah 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 and it brought him right down to nothing unbelief evil heart of unbelief so here we go we got the whosoever shall do the will now we had James and John and Mary how about John the Baptist was John the Baptist related to Jesus mm -hmm. remember when John the Baptist sent to Jesus to inquire whether he was the Christ what did Jesus say 
oh send send John my cousin just tell him yeah I'm the dude I'm the Christ so what he said no he replied in the spirit and said tell John that the lepers are cleansed the dead are raised the gospel is preached right yes. how did he deal with John from the same level of anointing mm -hmm. are you getting this yeah. how about with his mother Mary yes he obviously see him dealing with them there why is to maintain that level of anointing which benefits them in the long run mm -hmm. am I getting this across I hope so mm -hmm. so our relationship here and our connection here is not based on family it's not based on friendship if it was how far could we go it doesn't mean we can't have a friendly relationship and and treat each other like family to some degree but it's dangerous territory are you here mm -hmm. I mean, this isn't easy to say but you understand? it needs to be said Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 let us not be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not as we have therefore opportunity let us do good unto all men especially unto them who are of the household of faith say household of faith. of faith now the household of faith is a different beast altogether than the household of family it has different rules it has different mechanics it has different giving and receiving properties mm -hmm. do you understand yes. there's a different order to the household of faith now beware have you ever heard the term family church mm -hmm. what's the first word in that it's a family church it is a church designed to make the family happy mm -hmm. are you here and I'm not saying all family churches are bad I'm just saying the concept of family church is going crosswise with what I'm saying today mm -hmm. you understand family is not first in the church do I have to go and show you the more verses of scripture on this who's first in the church God is first and then there's an order and we respect the anointing there's a household of faith who would have been who uh, the father of our faith would have been Abraham so he would be the beginning of the household of faith yes. we follow after the faith of Abraham so it's a household of faith it's built on faith and there's faith we remember we were talking about believing or not believing yes. are you here there's a structure that that provides for your believing needs in the household and the proper order of faith say the order of faith the order of faith sounds strange doesn't it the household of faith but a family church that's designed around the family first and most people think that this is a godly trait if you bring it up you say family first family first it sounds right doesn't it it sounds right family first we're a family church family first well God cares about the family yes he does but he cares about it secondly are you here yes. you know how many people are offended at me right now they're offended at the things I'm saying because family is not first seek ye first the family is that what he said the kingdom of God and his righteousness does he care about the family yes in light of the kingdom of God the family mm -hmm. are you here yes. is this making sense mm -hmm. so people think that this family first thing or family church like I said I'm not saying that every family church is wrong or bad I'm saying that the premise of a family church a church designed around the family is a bad idea mm -hmm. it should be designed around the word and the anointing yeah. which will eventually get the family going in the right direction yeah. right. and other people would, would be offended if I said anything otherwise than family first Jesus said I must be about my father's business now Abraham the father of our faith the household of faith what is the first thing we won't turn there because I want to keep going on here what is the first thing that God said to Abraham the father of our faith do you remember he said get thee out right, let's go there you can find Genesis real quick right 
Genesis chapter 12 and this is the first place where God is speaking to Abram his name was Abraham here Abram here and then he called him Abraham later right Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 now the Lord had said unto Abram get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred are you here yes. and from thy father's house What's the first thing God said to him? I'm going to make you a great nation. No, he said, first, you got to get out of that. You got to get out of that mindset so I can put you into a different mindset, a mindset of faith that will do things for you. And that's what I'm trying to get is belief. Are you getting this? I, I read that because I used to quote it a little bit and it just made me laugh when it said, and from thy kindred. Yeah. <laughs> that was all of them. Yep. You know, it wasn't just his father's house. I get that. But they said, from your, from your cousin, your kindred, all of them, get away from them. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? Why is this such a big deal? Why would God say that? The first thing, if it wasn't a big deal. Because they possess the power to bring you down. They were the same ones that brought Jesus down in Nazareth and wanted to throw him off a cliff. Yeah. Family relations can kill you. If not just your faith, everything else if it kills your faith and you need healing you got problems right mm -hmm. family relations tried to throw Jesus off a cliff mm -hmm. what has to come first Jesus walked through their midst and went his way are you getting this so anyway so I won't always say or do or be what you want me to be and think that and you think that I should as a family as a friend person and just not it's not gonna happen and if I offend you from that way don't let that see the problem with that is if it offends you then you won't be able to hear listen you won't be able to hear what the Spirit is saying to you through me this is not our relationship and I don't want you to think this is difficult but I don't want you to think that I don't like you do you understand and I don't want you to think and I don't I want you to think you don't like me either that's not the point I'm trying to speak to a higher place and if we let those lower things offend us then we won't be able to go there are you getting this because yeah. nothing means more to me than going into the spirit and speaking by the anointing I get as much out of it as anybody else maybe more so this is not our relationship don't be deceived don't be choked off by it don't be offended by it Hebrews 12 14 follow after peace with all men and holiness yeah right without which no man shall see the Lord verse 15 looking diligently same group of words here beware right mm -hmm. be careful watch out warning looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God lest any root of bitterness say root of bitterness what happens with family people lots of times a root of bitterness they did something you didn't like get used to it right and if you let that root of bitterness because you think you're on the same level and it doesn't mean you're not you're not the same level with God I'm gonna to try to get this across if then you you think that you have the ability to say something because you were offended by it this is going over big I'll keep going lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled I've seen it happen I've seen people get offended and they thought well I how could you say that to me that's why they didn't want Jesus saying anything to them because he was Jesus they called him Jesus when he was a kid beware lest any root of bitterness now root here speaks to me what's a root a roots down deep in there it got down they meditated on it they meditated on it got down in there and what is that gonna do if you start to get a root of bitterness because you were thinking something you shouldn't have been thinking about the preacher are you going to hear what he says to you when he has to speak by the anointing no you're gonna still be thinking about how you done did me wrong 
Do preachers done did things wrong to people? All the time. They're good at it, it seems. Doesn't mean they're doing it intentionally. But it's when we hold them in that family and friends category, like Verizon or whoever it is. The friends and family. And they didn't respond to the email that the way I wanted them to respond they didn't put the smiley face at the end I, I mean it goes to stupid things mm -hmm. you understand that people leave churches over the stupidest of things when they should know that hey wait I'm here because God brought me here I this is where I need to go and and I need to hear what the what he's saying by the Spirit of God is this right mm -hmm. imagine this my my desire more than anything is to be able to say things by the Spirit of God that enable you to go on did you hear that mm -hmm. my desire is to be able to say things by the Spirit of God that enable you to go on welcome to the household of faith faith comes by hearing hearing by the Word of God and so I don't want anything to hinder that Psalms 41 and then verse 9 yay is that it says that right Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted which did eat of my bread has lifted up his heel against me who is who is this quote this is this is a prophecy of what how many of you know what this is G Judas turning on Jesus this is literally a foreshadowing and a prophecy of what happened to Jesus it is written my own familiar friend in whom I trusted which did eat with of my bread has lifted up his heel against me mm -hmm. why did this happen Judas saw Jesus as a friend mm -hmm. are you here yes. And he was offended in him and when it went came pushed came to shove I'm not taking this these guys are gonna give me 30 pieces of silver he'll get over it. he walks through crowds they can't throw him off a cliff and eh, whatever right he was treating him as a friend are you here yeah. my own familiar friend in whom I trusted which did eat of my bread has lifted up his heel against me Judas saw Jesus as a friend did Peter see Jesus as a friend Peter saw Jesus as the Christ when he said who am I who do people say I am Peter said you're the Christ the anointed one are you here mm -hmm. do you see the difference one dealt with the anointing side but Judas saw the friend <coughs> side and acted on it Peter saw the anointed side you are the Christ you are the anointed one where else we're we gonna go you are the ones that have the words of life yes. are you here yes. you getting anything out of this mm -hmm. I'm just trying to show you this is all through the Bible it's the first thing God told Abram you'll be able to answer that now if people go hey what's the first thing God told Abraham get out get out of your kindred and from your family mm -hmm. and he became the household of faith did he become the household of faith in his family no he had to leave them they had to join the household of faith it's ordered differently it works differently it's still a household and it's a family so to speak we're the children of God right all right I hope I'm getting this across I'm almost done like I said numbers chapter 12 did you find it mm -hmm. and Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married uh oh what's going on here is this a family problem yeah. which what did it say they did Miriam and Aaron they spoke against Moses because of a family problem mm -hmm. yeah. beware because of the Ethiopian woman he had married I'm trying not to laugh for he had married an Ethiopian woman and that didn't go over big did it and they said verse 2 and here here is where you need to be careful and they said hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses hath he not spoken also by us and the Lord heard it now what she said is not necessarily untrue the Lord had spoken by her she was called a prophetess 
she'd been around a long time she'd been through many of these things mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. yep. and yet here it says but because of the way she treated Moses she tried to bring him into this family have hey, we can hear from God too it's not just him mm -hmm. we hear from God too you hear what you hear what that say the Lord heard it what did he hear he heard disrespect mm -hmm. for the anointing he heard unbelief hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses has he not also spoken by us the Lord heard it and it goes down it says it and angered him verse 8 with him I will speak mouth to mouth even apparently and not in dark speeches in the similitude of the Lord hath he beheld wherefore then were you not afraid to speak against my servant Moses and the anger of the Lord was kindled against them and he departed she ended up getting leprosy for a week and would have had it for more than that except Moses prayed for her. who prayed for her? Moses because Moses was the one in responsibility over that group you understand I hear God for myself now these are things I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say some stuff and it doesn't mean you don't hear God from yourself it doesn't mean Miriam didn't hear, hear God there are uh, songs written in here that she wrote obviously by the Spirit of God they're in the Bible right so it wasn't necessarily that she said that it's the context of which she said it in a family situation I hear God myself I don't need you that's what he's hearing that's what you're hearing when you say something like that God set people in the church in anointings to say things the family challenges the family person challenges something they don't like they rise up their back gets all hunched over or heart or hearts what do they say I don't know hackles. sure their hackles up yeah do we have hackles I don't know but anyway you know I didn't like that so their hackles get up they challenge it thinking they're on the same footing I disagree I don't agree with that doesn't mean you have to agree with everything it's the it's the spirit behind it are you here yes. I disagree comes with an attitude did God like it no I don't see it that way I'm just I'm, I'm giving you some things that you can go okay <laughs> yeah some of us may have said that the problem if you're if you're getting that from family and friends or the relationship then it's going to hinder you I hope I'm getting this cross I think I am so our relationship here in ending hopefully our relationship here is not built on friendship because we have the same likes in common and we vote for the same political party or any of that kind of stuff mm -hmm. it's not necessarily on our family even though we can like each other's families you understand that's not what our relationships built on are you getting this mm -hmm. our relationship but should be built on whether I am a man of God and hear from God and whether you've heard from God that you should be a part of this and be here as simple as that and whether I'm faithful in my house to preach the word that the Lord gives me that's all he could ask of me is to preach what he gives me and say what he tells me to say that's what our relationship is built on it doesn't mean we can't like the same cars it doesn't mean those things but it's not built on that that's secondary and to put it where we should be putting it is honoring the Lord see that and whether I'm faithful in the office that God has put me in because I require in this office I require belief and if I can have your belief which is what I require which is what God requires and what I've been talking about then I can take you in to a place remember we started that out belief enters in those who have believed do enter in then I can take you into a new reality a new reality that the Holy Ghost is God in the earth today we kind of know how we got here but how do we get here because I made up some stupid message no because I followed the Spirit of God I've been faithful to say what he's told me to say 
and he's building the household of faith Holy Ghost is God in the earth today and you walk with him by saying words that's a new reality that you live in and you can enter into it by faith using the words I worship you Holy Ghost unveils him in a way that nothing else can and will if you can hear that and you can do it you can go there are you getting this there's a grace here haha -ha. there's a grace here in the spirit that we can enter into and be in and live in and walk in and it's gonna get better if the Word of God is like a seed planted it must mature in your heart it must mature in your heart first you had to let it go in there you had to keep from the cares of the world from choking it out it's a word of God that goes in and starts to mature on the inside of you and grow up and there's a faith that comes from it a lifestyle that comes from it a new reality that comes from walking with the living God in the earth today